In over 42 years of space travel, the Voyager space probes have had a lot of time to uncover the mysteries of our solar system. Greatest Voyager space probe discoveries. Io's Volcanoes. In 1979, Voyager discovered that volcanoes can exist in some of the coldest reaches of space, far from the warm light of our sun. One of Jupiter's moons, Io, has a surface littered with active volcanoes and lakes of lava. Thanks to Jupiter's immense size, its gravity pushes and pulls at Io like the moon does our oceans. Instead of creating waves, Jupiter's tidal pulls heat Io until its burning interior becomes too much to keep inside and explodes to the surface like a teenager confessing to their crush. While the moon's surface is minus 130 degrees Celsius, its volcanoes are over 1600 degrees Celsius, a phenomenon perfectly captured by Katy Perry's 2008 hit single, Hot and Cold. Some of these volcanoes' eruptions can even be as high as 60 to 150 miles. Even 500 miles from the sun, Io is the most volcanically active place in the solar system, having simultaneous eruptions and continuous volcanism from its hundreds of active volcanoes. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of all our upcoming videos. And if you end up enjoying this one, hit the like button before you go. Europa's Ocean Both Voyager probes got a good look at another Jovian moon, Europa, and scientists were surprised at what they saw. The surface lacked the mountains, craters, and any other wrinkles that would show the moon's incredible age. Instead, Europa had pimples and blemishes of crisscrossing cracks covering its face, revealing the surface to be that of an awkward teenager. Ice had filled up the cracks where they could, flowing in from somewhere. This meant two things. One, Europa's surface could move and shift, not quite like our planet's tectonic plates, but similar enough. And two, there was an ocean of warmer liquid below the surface the cracked ice was sliding across. This hidden ocean could hide all sorts of mysteries within its depths, which we still don't know 40 years after its discovery. It might even hold the secret to the origins of life. New Moons New moons aren't just a phase we see here on Earth, and Voyager showed us that there are quite a few more of them than we'd thought in our solar system. Both probes discovered a combined 24 new satellites, three around Jupiter, five Saturn, 11 Uranus, and five Neptune. In true astronomer fashion, most of these moons were named along the same conventions as their planets. From Thebe to Naiad and Prometheus to Pandora, they were given mythological Greek names to go with their planet's Roman god counterparts. The sole exceptions were Uranus's moons, which were named after Shakespearean heroes, villains, and fools. I guess NASA scientists are too many fans of the bards to follow their own rules to the letter. Great Red Spot We've possibly known about Jupiter's Great Red Spot for nearly as long as we've had telescopes capable of seeing it. Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini had found a so-called permanent spot in 1665, but he didn't know what it was. It was only when Voyager 1 reached Jupiter in 1979, 314 years after Cassini's recording, that scientists finally uncovered this mystery dot's identity. It was a giant storm 14,500 miles wide, large enough to fit three Earths inside. The spot's been shrinking since then, however, and is only just over 10,000 miles long. The storm rotates counterclockwise in a 14-day Jovian period, only six here on Earth high above Jupiter's main clouds. Its 270 to 425 mile per hour winds means that it can be nearly two and a half times faster than the strongest hurricanes here on Earth. While Voyager may have unlocked some of the secrets of this planetary birthmark, there's still one major mystery left to uncover. Why it's red. Termination shock. The reach of our sun's influence is incredibly large. Its solar winds, the electrically charged gas it blows from it at 700,000 to 1.5 million miles per hour, extend 7.8 billion to 8.7 billion miles from its surface. That's 84 to 94 times the distance between our planet and the sun. These solar winds create a bubble around the sun known as the heliosphere. Beyond the heliosphere, past a barrier known as the termination shock, the winds slow dramatically as they first contact the winds of interstellar space. When the Voyager probes crossed in 2004 and 2007, we learned something important about the heliosphere. It's a bit of a misnomer. It isn't a perfect sphere. 
Its southern pole is a billion miles closer to the sun than its northern counterpart, which seems massive but is relatively small on a universal scale. There's also a second layer between the heliosphere and interstellar space, the heliosheath. By crossing the termination shock into the heliosheath, Voyager still had a long way to go before it finally left the solar system for good. Neptune's Great Dark Spot in 1989, Voyager 2 passed by Neptune and discovered something never expected from the furthest planet from the Sun, a great dark spot swirling on the surface. NASA had thought Neptune would be dormant without sunlight heating up its atmosphere. As it turns out, even 2.79 billion miles from the Sun, it's not too cold for storms. In fact, it's perfect for brewing up trouble within the planet's frozen methane atmosphere. This is understandable. Being cold has never made me feel tired. I always just air my discomfort to everyone until either the heater kicks in or I get some hot cocoa in my hands. Why should Neptune, named after the god of the tumultuous seas, be any different? However, while Neptune's great dark spot might have been close to the size of Jupiter's famous cyclone, it wasn't nearly as long-lived. The storm was already shrinking during Voyager's flyby. By the time we got another look at it in 1994, it was already long gone. Multiple Ring Systems Before Voyager set off, cosmologists had thought that there was only one ring system to rule them all in the solar system, and it was Saturn's. Well, Uranus had also been discovered to have some in 1977, calculated as the planet passed in front of a star and occluded its brightness. However, the rings themselves had never been seen. When the Voyager probes finally reached our solar system's gas giants, they had photographic evidence that not just Uranus and Saturn had rings, but all four giants did. Jupiter's four rings, discovered by Voyager 1 in 1979, had been invisible for years. They were made of dust particles only visible when lit from behind by the sun or through infrared cameras. Neptune's rings were found 10 years later when Voyager 2 passed by. The blue planet has four rings like its biggest sibling, but unlike the others, it also had two incomplete ring arcs orbiting it. As for the previously known but unseen rings of Uranus, Voyager 2's close-up photos revealed what calculations couldn't. Uranus had two more rings than previously thought. 11 rather than 9. Triton's Geysers During Voyager 2's last flyby around Neptune before it headed on its way out of the solar system, the probe discovered that Io wasn't the only erupting moon in the galaxy. Triton, the blue planet's largest moon, had geysers pluming to its surface. However, while Io's volcanoes are thousands of degrees hotter than its sub-freezing surface, Triton is like Elsa. When its geysers let it go, frosty nitrogen gas and unknown dark particles fly up to five miles into its nitrogen methane atmosphere, building itself an isolated icy kingdom. Interstellar Space Ridley Scott wasn't wholly right when he came up with Alien's tagline. Yes, in space no one can hear you scream, but that's only because most people aren't listening with the right tools. Space isn't silent. Plasma waves let off different radio frequencies depending on where they are in the universe. Here in the solar system, plasma is a low 300 Hz, inaudible to the human ear but detectable on Voyager systems. However, when Voyager 1 finally passed out of the heliosphere into interstellar space in August 2012, the plasma around the probe became denser and rose to a higher 2 to 3 kilohertz. The moment of this crossing was captured by a sudden, haunting screech of interstellar space. It was only this sound that even let us know that this momentous occasion, the first man-made object making it past the heliosheath, had even happened. As it turns out, we might not be able to hear Sigourney Weaver screams out there, but spaces we're more than capable of. Voyager has gone to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system. What are the farthest reaches you've gone to in the name of adventure? Let me know in the comments below. 1. Jupiter's Lightning Considering Jupiter's namesake famously wields a thunderbolt, NASA probably should have expected that the planet's enormous storms come with lightning, just like they do here on Earth. Space names have an unusual tendency to be prophetic after all. However, when Voyager 1 sent back images of multiple lightning strikes across Jupiter's poles, scientists were surprised. It was the first time this phenomenon had been found elsewhere in the universe. With how often Jupiter seemed to be striking, it wasn't an uncommon sight on the planet either. Voyager also managed to capture the sound of the following thunder, meaning the vacuum of space isn't as quiet as we thought. 
In the recordings, the lightning chirps in a way more reminiscent of a Looney Tunes character comically falling off a cliff than the booming thunder we're used to. While they may look the same, Jovian lightning works a bit differently than here on Earth. 